Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for being here today. My name is Dennis Briefer, and uh, today I want to show you an infrastructure I developed for the creation of uh, Joomla extensions in a model-driven way. But uh, what does it mean in a model-driven way? Um, model-driven development, in a nutshell, you can say you just put all the, the, the information you want to have in your extension into a model, um, independent to the platform, to the Joomla version, and just press a button and you get your code. That's all. So that's a simply, simple um, definition of model-driven development. And uh, that's what I'm doing. Today, I will um, at first explain how I um, decided the way to my decision to create such an infrastructure for Joomla. And um, yeah, what was uh, the, the problem we had during the development. And uh, after that, the second part of my presentation will be a live demo. Uh, not a live demo, a demo, because a live demo is bad. I just created a screencast, and fortunately, it works on the, on the projector. So um, yeah, I will sit down for the second part, and I will show you how to install the, the, the plugin, how to use it, and how it, uh, yeah, the current state of our development so far we are. OK. But at first, start with who am I and where I'm coming from. Um, I hope you can read that. Uh, I'm from Germany. I work in a university. And um, yeah, I studied computer science. And I work with Joomla since 2008. Yeah, I started with Joomla when I, where I was in my, uh, in my bachelor uh, study studies. And um, yeah, then I started working for our department, um, creating extensions for Joomla. And our university, all the websites we have for all departments, also for the um, university itself, are based on Joomla. They work on Joomla, and uh, that's why Joomla plays a big role in our university. Maybe some of you think, OK, why didn't I uh, hear of you before? Yeah, OK, we were shy. So that's why I'm here now, and uh, we want to come together with the community. So that's why I'm here, and I hope I can also come to the Joomla Days in Germany and also maybe to the BIRD conference. We'll see. But um, uh, today I'm here. Yeah, during the years, we developed uh, more than 90 e extensions. Not 19, 90 extensions. There are a lot of extensions. Yeah, And it's fun. We love it. We uh, started with Joomla 1.0, but in that uh, stage, it was uh, the first stage of creating Joomla, of using Joomla as uh, the, the website, uh, the, the, the platform for our websites on the university. In the university, um, we had it, it grow, uh, grown, uh, grown over the years, and um, yeah, we uh, developed for all the versions 1.0, as I uh, mentioned, 1.5, of course, and we had 1.6, 1.7, 2.5, and so on, and now we are on 3.4. And yeah, the problem in university is who develops and maintains the extensions we have. Of course, students. Yeah, we have a lot of students. Just a few um, employees which get money for it. The most of them are students, and the students, yeah, they do not have the experience we have um, uh, as um, as graduated. Uh, computer science or as computer science who work with Joomla or as uh, Joomla uh, developers who work with Joomla for several years. So um, we have a fluctuating developer teams. That's one thing we have to deal with. Um, yeah, and this, the biggest thing, the biggest issue we have during our development and maintenance is the migration to a new Joomla platform. Yeah, um, You know that if you uh, create an extension and maintain it, you want to use a new Joomla, the new Joomla platform, of course, yeah, and then you have to migrate your um, extension. If you have 90 extensions, that's a lot of work. Yeah, that's you need tremendous effort, tremendous time to do that, um, especially in university when you have students for this um, work. So every time we uh, migrate or we migrated our extensions, we had to. We also um, combined it with the refactoring, of course. Um, we implemented new features because, yeah, with Joomla 1.5, we now cool. We have an MVC architecture uh, with 2.5 uh, or with 1.7. We have a better ACL, so we can implement new features. We can do more. We can um, bring our extensions forward. But that's also work we have to do during a migration. And uh, yeah, we change the structures as well. But what is the effect? Yeah, we're just in university, but also if you work, uh, if you develop Joomla, not only in university, just also in a, in a company or whatever, 
And when you have more than just one or two extensions, it's a lot of work migrating it. And um, what was the effect? I, um, I saw in our, in our project a lot of the extensions um, weren't migrated um, because it was, we needed too much time for the migration. So we just picked out the ones we use on every page, which the ones which are the most important one, and uh, some other extensions, which also were cool. Um, we had to um, only support them for older Joomla versions because we had no time to migrate them. On this slide, you can see I made an, uh, yeah, uh, I, I want to illustrate um, the, the time we needed for our migrations in our case. You see when the, the, the dates, when uh, where a new Joomla version um, came out and when we migrated. Of course, the first migration from 1.0 to 1.5 was not that hard because we, uh, we had just a few extensions there. But here you can see from... Uh, my, we started, I started, as I said, 2008, and we got a lot of developers. We, it started in 2008, 2009, creating more and more extensions. And here you see the migration from 1.5 to first 1.6, and 1.7, 2.5 first. And we needed one and a half year for that. Because, of course, we were students. Um, we cannot work and uh, uh, migrate eight hours per day. We do it when we have free time. We do it when we are in projects. And um, yeah, we needed more than one year. And this is a lot of time. Here you can see the current migration to uh, Joomla 3. And uh, I think we finish it next month, maybe. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, OK. We hope that we finish it next month. But we are in the migration um, since uh, 2013, beginning of two, uh, two, 2013. Um, that's two years, yeah, more than two years, of course, because we started with, OK, Joomla 3.0 came out. What is new? Um, let's uh, try to uh, uh, let's um, uh, make a research what, ch what changed to uh, how can we uh, incorporate it into our extensions and so on. And came the new version and so on and so on. It's, that's the actual process, current process. Yeah, and I just created um, an expectation for an estimation for Joomla 4. It will be in the same length, so, oh no, not again. Yeah, um, I love Joomla, and I work for Joomla, and I developed for Joomla since seven years, but such a migration is really a lot of work because you have to, to keep so much things in mind, and it's so hard. And there must be an easier way for that. Of course, there is maybe. Um, that's by what I said in my introduction. I thought about doing it in a model-driven way, way, because what do we have in our, what are the problems during our migrations? Um, as, as most of you know, when you are extension developers, we have a, a bunch, a, a, a tremendous amount, amount of uh, generic and schematically redundant code in your extensions. Uh, when you take a look to the views or to the models, they actually look the same. Just small things differ in each view, in each model. So there's a lot of schematically redundant and generic code in that. And um, one, of the, one of the main um, motivations for model-driven development is, yeah, when you find such a, an issue, when you find lots of generic and schematically redundant code, then you should think about doing a model-driven approach. That's the first thing. The second problem we had was, OK, we have too many extensions. Yeah? Um, it's easy to migrate two, three, four extensions. It depends on the developers you have for that purpose. But um, 90 extensions, for instance, in our case, with we are up to 10 developers, core developers, who do this in students, most of them students, in their time, it's hard, and you cannot do this in an easy way. You have to um, speed it up a little bit. Yeah, and um, one problem, one big problem we have is we have a lot of dependencies. And this is what I want to explain with that picture here. Just take a look through the, we have the core, yeah, what is uh, the Joomla platform, the CMS, what we use as a core. There are the changes what, which come from the, from the community. And we have all our extensions, and the extensions are connected to each other. They are combined. They have dependencies. Maybe you have a component which shows data from another component, or maybe you have um, a component. You have the dependencies, of course, from component to the core. Yeah, 
and we have to deal with it also during the migration. When we migrate extension A, but extension A is, uh, has a dependency to extension B, then we also have to migrate extension B. And we have to consider, we have to keep that in mind during the migration process. And uh, we have this both on the software level, yeah, of course, because we use the platform in our extensions, and also on the, on the data uh, level, yeah, we have the, the dependencies A, uh, extension A needs data from extension B. And all this is hard to document. This is hard to learn. Hard to learn means when we get new students yeah, or new developers in our, into our team, they have to get into our work. They have to, to learn it, what we already created, how Joomla works, how you migrate Joomla, and so on. And this is hard to learn for them. And uh, yeah, we, find, we, we saw that in our project. Of course, this is hard to maintain and hard to migrate. What's the difference be between maintain, maintenance and migration? Migration can also mean you can, maybe you decide someday, we don't want to do it, but maybe you decide one day to use your, your extensions for WordPress or for Drupal or whatever, yeah, not only for Joomla. So then some people, I, I saw that in my research, um, think about a migration, this also migration. Maintenance for us um, contains the migration. That means um, we will use, use uh, Joomla for as long as we have Joomla and hopefully forever. And uh, for us, a migration is part of the maintenance we have. So I uh, started a research. What can we use? What, uh, what is ex are there some existing generators or model-driven approaches we can use? And of course, there are a lot of generators which are quite good. Uh, for instance, component creator. I think you're a guy of, of them. You just wear the T-shirt. Yeah, I use the T-shirt. Okay, okay. So, yeah, but you you use it, and it's it's still good. It's I think it works. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, it works really good. Also, um, creating what you do there is you also uh, create the extension in a model-driven way because you use an, a web front end. You create your kind of model. Okay, you can say also code is a model, but you create. You say I just want this, want this, want this, and this is all. Independent to the platform, yeah. You you create a model which is independent to the underlying version, yeah. You can use it for every version, but uh, the, the 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 model information is the same in each for each version. Then there's Black Rabbit, Casey Code, Component Generator, JCook, and more and more and more. And I tested a lot of them, and most of them work really good. Also, there is some uh, some research in academia as well, yeah. I'm not the only one who thinks okay, Joomla. Who knows Joomla has a lot of generic code, yeah, a lot of people do that, and um, I found some papers also working on that issue, but the, 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 the infrastructures, the tools, they are not really reachable, you don't find them, it's, it's very hard to find them, and uh, that's a problem. Also, the problem is that not all of them are free, you can use them free for, for trying them, and if you decide, oh, they work perfect, then you have to pay for it, yeah, it's okay, yeah, when you have something good, pay it, uh, sell it, sold it. Somebody should pay for it. Um, but the most, actually, all of them uh, didn't uh, don't consider the combination of uh, the data and the software. So the dependencies we have, also the dependencies between several extensions, um, different extensions, and that's a big problem because that is important for us. And you saw that in my problem definition. So this, because I didn't find anything what I can use for us for our purposes. This was the birth. Of Joomla, yeah, Joomla MDD, easy. I think it's, yeah, that's clear. So this was the birth of Joomla, and what is Joomla? Let's start with the approach. Very first, let me try something. As I said, it's easy. Yeah, for the creation, yeah, for the for the initial creation of an extension, just create a model independent to um, to any Joomla version. Create a model. We we'll say, okay, I have uh, view, I have a model, or, or you don't have to uh, create a model, you just say, I have a page, and this page should uh, show me participants of a conference, yeah? This is just a part of a model. You don't say, okay, I use uh, platform-specific methods in a model, because this is not part of a model, it should not be part of a model. You just create a model, and then you use a generator, which is platform-specific, yeah? 
which can be platform specific, the generator uses the model, you press a button, and then you have your extension. Woo, easy, yeah? It's not that hard. Um, for the maintenance, and this is the cool thing here, you don't have to uh, change everything by hand. You just go to the model. If you see, oh, there's, I, I missed um, an entity, I missed a page, I, I want another page which shows not only participants, also the rooms we have on a conference, yeah? So then change it in the model, it's simple, press the button again, and you get a new version, yeah? And the new version you can reinstall in your, ex in your application, and that's it. For a migration, so if you want to uh, migrate to a new version, to a new Joomla version, or maybe to another CMS, or whatever, actually to another application, you just have to change the generator. You don't have to change the model because the model should be platform independent. Of course, in MDD, there are also platform specific models and so on, but not in that case. It's uh, easier. Um, so I created, not me alone, not I alone, we were two, we are two guys who are creating, who are actually current, currently working on the, uh, on the infrastructure. We created two plugins for Eclipse. Okay, why Eclipse? Who of you is using Eclipse? Oh, okay, more than I thought, uh, more than I expected. Not bad, um, but actually the most web or uh, Joomla developers use, I think, IntelliJ products, uh, PHP Storm and so on, because they are good, they work as they should, and they're perfect. But I started my research three years ago, and three years ago Joomla was still good, and uh, I don't think that three years ago there was a PHP storm, was it? No. The fifth year. Okay, so yeah, I was a student in academia and I was lazy looking for a good tool. Uh, yeah, and it's not wasn't free. Yeah, you're right. And um, yeah, Eclipse, Eclipse, and also NetBeans in that time was uh, very distributed in our universe, of course. So uh, another. Um, Thing why I used uh, if I use Eclipse was my advisor is um, developing plugins for Eclipse, which are used in industry as well. So she said, if you want to getting a PhD, become a PhD, you have to use Eclipse. Okay, <laughs> um, never mind because Eclipse is cool because you can, there are a lot of um, of tools you can use for kind of. Um, just start and you have a nice infrastructure, model-driven development infrastructure. Yeah? There's the Eclipse modeling framework, what you can, which you can use to create in a simple way. It's also a hard, it's, it's, it's hard work to do it, but you can start and you see, you see very fast um, some, some results. That's a good thing here. And we created two plugins here. Um, I start with CJSL first. Um, CJSL. It was the, the, the first um, plugin we, we created, not that hard. We wanted to have an, a, po a possibility to create um, Joomla-based applications um, model-driven, so, so that you can skip the first part of creating an, uh, a Joomla-based website. It was for Joomla 2.5, um, so you, can, you don't have to install anything. You don't have to go to, through the install um, stage. And the first things, creating menus and creating um, modules and pack the modules to, to some pages and so on, you don't have to do that because you do that in a model. And you, just press a button and you get an application with, uh, which uh, already has, actually it was only on the data level, um, all the data in it. So all the, the, the relations we have from models to pages to the manual items and so on. That was the first thing. But I have to say, sorry, it's just for Joomla 2.5. And it's, yeah, it works, um, but it needs a little bit of improvement. But it will get better, become better because yeah, I will mention that later because we uh, try to combine both. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's also Java. Um, actually, we can try, but I don't. You have also uh, you have just a few um, dependencies to the Eclipse modeling framework um, when you're using the plugins. So when you install my plugins. Um, it will also install some uh, some uh, plugins from EMF. So we will use it. But we have another idea. I will come to that point later. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, but what we are currently uh, developing is uh, the EJSL. 
it stands for Extension Joomla Specific Language. It's not only the, the language, it's a modeling language which you can use to create models, models which uh, you can use for your Joomla extension. But it's also, it also contains a generator, a code generator, which creates code from that models. And I show you that in, uh, uh, in a few minutes. And you can, can find all this on uh, our website. We are still academia, and we uh, we just we have uh, we, uh, yeah we, we fear giving things out to community because we think it's not good enough, and they will hate us when it's not good enough. So ah, do everything; nobody can reach it, and that's the thing in our universe. But we are in a changing process now. So here is a website; you all can go to that website, and you all can download the the plugin and can use it. Uh, all this thing will we will go to GitHub with it, so then you can use it in GitHub. We have our own uh, GitLab uh, server, and everything is in our university. But we will go to GitHub because I want to have everything open source there, yeah, and everything should use it. But we started in the private uh, repositories because it was just the beginning and nothing good enough to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the current state? We have the modeling language. Um, which you can use um, for as a as a meta model for your uh, models, yeah, for as uh, where your, your your information for extension um, is uh, is in. We have a generator for Joomla 2.5, which was not uh, that good, not as good as uh, our current generator for Joomla 3, because we are also currently in that stage of. Um, creating a better generator structure so that it's easily extendable for the future. So if you have a new Joomla version, for instance, and you have to change your generator, this should not be hard. And we want a lot, uh, the most of the code, uh, we want to reuse the most of the code so we have a new generator um, architecture. It's not important for you, just for the infrastructure developers. But we have the generator and it generates a lot of code. I should show you that later. And we have what we currently have is a text-based editor. So yeah, we are in the in in early stage now. It's nothing you can click and uh, use to click something here and something here. You have to write code. It's not that hard to write that code. You will see that later. And in uh, this editor, you at least have a code completion option. You have uh, it supports code completion. It shows you errors if you, something is missing in your model. The most of the things are optional, but some things are required. And if you miss something, it will show you that. So um, that's what we have in our um, that is our editor we have. So enough of uh, speaking. Um, let's come to a demo now. I will show you that uh, what it's what it does, what it, how it actually works, how to install it. And for that purpose, I created just a really simple um, conference model. But I want to use that model. I want a, an, a component which I can use to uh, to manage a conference. Yeah, in a conference, I have participants, I have talks, I have agenda items. Yeah, I have a program there, and I have rooms. Very simple, but it's okay for the demo today. And what I want to do is I want this model. Um, in a component. So on the most of you who create extensions now, okay, how should I start now? How do you start creating a component from scratch? In my experience, from scratch means take something what is still existing, copy it, and change the things which differ. Or that, yeah, you use a generator, which is still existing. But what is still existing? But if you want to change something because you forgot something, I don't know how. Uh, do you pay for it, or do you just have to? I pay sometimes. Okay. Sometimes change the, the because I do not so just one table, and then you copy it, and yeah, yeah, but. Mm. That's yeah. That's why they are really cool, the the the, the generators. But it's also work there. And um, yeah, um, you have to create 
you use such a generator or you have to create all the models, the views, the controllers, the manifest, uh, the language files, and so on and so on. That's a lot of work. So brace yourselves. It's uh, time for a demo now. The demo is coming. And uh, yeah, for that purpose, I sit down here. I hope all of you can um, see that. So is it OK? You can read it? OK, so I start with um, the first thing. The, part, the first part of the demo is uh, how to create the Joomla extension model driven way. And the first, what I want to show you is how simple it is. Of course, you have to use Eclipse, but the ones of you who have use Eclipse, you can do it. You can do it today or tomorrow in the next week. I would be glad if you do it and tell me if it works, it should work. And I show you how, to, how easy it is to install the plugins, to create a model, and to generate code. That's the first part. And um, yeah, the first thing is you should go um, to our website, yeah, the JoomDD overview page. This is also a Joomla page, of course, yeah. <laughs> um, to the JoomDD page. And here um, on that page, you find uh, the, the update site, which you can use in your Eclipse. The people who use Eclipse knows that. Um, you copy this page, switch to Eclipse, yeah, and um, install it. You can install it through uh, installing new software. Most of you should know that. Um, you go to that menu item. You add a new update site and just uh, copy the link you copied, uh, insert it to your uh, update site to create one. And you have done that and press OK. You see there is JoomDD. Yeah? Um, there's also the CJSL, this EJSL, CJSL. There is the newest version. This was from uh, the 26th May, so it's um, quite new. It worked for the demo, so therefore I didn't change anything till now. <laughs> Um, yeah, select the EJSL plugin. Yeah, and then the typical process: accept the terms of license agreement. Yeah, accept them. It's all open source. Yeah, if you use it, you have to change something. You also have to contribute and so on. All these things, and then you restart Eclipse. It's not that hard. And when you've done that, we can start creating a model. Yeah, creating a project. The simplest thing is just create a general project, but you can also um, create a PHP project, Java project, whatever. Yeah, it works. Um, but we create a general project here, give it a name, then we uh, create uh, a folder there, and this is important. One important thing: you create, you have to uh, name that folder source. Yeah, so there's our model in that folder, our source model it's in the source folder. Just create it. And then you can create your model. Yeah, also here the file. And now um, our meta model comes um, comes into account. You have to name your file as you like, but you have to use the ending .ejsl. Yeah, so because it's our meta model, which is behind, just rename, uh, just name it .ejsl. And with that, all the dependencies are um, solved, and you <coughs> can use all the cool things the editor, um, which is uh, which supports auto-completion and so on. So, and when you've done that, you have your project, you don't have to do anything else. Add any library or something here, you can just press OK. This is what I meant with the dependency, the X text nature, dependency to the EMF, and that's why I don't think it's so easy to use it in, a, in a PHP Storm, but we will try. I'll come to that later. Yeah, and uh, that's it, yeah, you don't have to do more. Just a project, a folder, and a file. And in that file, you can now start with uh, creating your model. And as you see here, um, you see just there's an error because a model requires at least a container for your extension. Yeah. I can, but I think then it's uh, the, the resolution is not good enough to see. But I'm sorry, but I. It was too late when I mentioned that I um, recorded it with a bad solution. <laughs> it was my fault. But you know how hard it is to create a screencast. Yeah, it's a lot of work. And OK, now it's too late. It was yesterday in the evenings. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can use uh, control space for the auto completion. And then it starts and just creates uh, keywords. 
for instance, here, the first keyword we have is the EJSL model, which is the name of the container, so that the generator knows, okay, now comes the model for EJSL. Give it a name, yeah, we name it conference, and we have some uh, kind of uh, uh, syntactical, syntactical sugar here, yeah, and brackets, so that you can easily read the models, that you can understand existing models, because we also want... Um, create, uh, want to give the people who use it some uh, templates or some examples which they can use so that they don't have to learn how to use the language so that just they can use it. Yeah. And the next stage. Um, we start with entities. Entities is our, uh, is the part of the data we have. Yeah. We have conferences, we have, we have participants, we have talks, we have rooms that are the entities. They are completely independent to a Joomla version also to a Joomla uh, extension. You can use the entity for components, for modules, for whatever, but when you generate something, the entities, the data thing will part, the database uh, thing will part of the component. But you can create references as well. Sorry? Yeah, you create the entity. Um, the, the entities are actually the same. The model we I, I showed, I mentioned um, a few slides ago. But, and uh, later, when you say, okay, I want a component, and this component should have a page, then I uh, create the references there to that entities. And I don't have to do more. I will show that. Yeah, create an entity. Here you see the error messages, also part of the, of the editor. It's nice, um, it helps you creating your model. We create an entity participant, and then a participant has attributes. Yeah, and you see the auto completion really helps here because it just um, uh, proposes the things it requires and which makes sense here, and not everything. So, this is a problem we still have. Um, we will change it in the next uh, version, but yeah, my my uh, colleague um, thought it would be great if the the modeler um, models the, the the type for the databases. And you see now, okay, for the for the experienced developers, it's clear, it's easy. You know, okay, our attribute name should be a varchar in my database, and okay, that's not that hard. But you have to model that. That's not what I want in a model. I just want to say I have an attribute name, and this is a text. Yeah, period. And if you like, you can. It, it should be optional, but you don't have to do it. In the current state, you have to do it. Fortunately, but it's not that hard. Um, you have to create just two things now. Um, uh, the type of the database, uh, the database type for the attribute, and the HTML type. So is it just a text field, or editor, or a, 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 a picker for date, or a picker for um, a picture or something? Yeah? You have to create it here. And this is easy because you just say text. Yeah, okay. Um, the next, we have an, uh, an, an uh, attack for attributes is primary. This is also not the best term for it. We, we should uh, rename it, but um, this is, of course, also for the database thing, but it's also for the, for the, for the use in the component. So just uh, try to um, imagine you have an... Um, a component, a view, a list view, yeah, where you uh, list an entity, and you want to go to the detail view or, or the edit view of that entity to clicking on an attribute, and this is what this tag makes. Yeah. So it, does, it uses, it says, okay, this attribute is the primary thing, and yeah, what we have now is it. These data types we have here um, are not part of the model, so we have to um, define them at first. It's also a thing I don't like in the current state. I want to change that. Um, it's cool to have it optional, but not uh, as a requirement, so that you have to do it. The good thing is you can fast. The good thing is you can use this uh, the data types uh, uh, several times. You don't have to define them every time. You can reuse them. So I skip the parts where I create all the entities. So it's all the same. Let's create some pages, add the pages. It's the second um, big thing you need in your model. Yeah, yeah, sure. You will see that in a later stage of that presentation. It's also part of the, of the auto-completion thing. Um, when you create pages, 
This is also independent to Joomla. Pages can be also PHP pages, web pages, or also pages of a uh, Java-based application, whatever, yeah? You can you just create entities and pages, and that's it. We start with an index page. An index page means this kind of list view, what we have, which uh, shows all the entities. And for that uh, index page, you see here, I also use the auto-completion, and it illustrates me all the uh, entities I already created. Yeah, we have the participant, the room, and the talk. And now I can create the reference so it, that it will be uh, generated. Okay, we want the participants to uh, refer them to the participant entity. Then we have to. We have to. This is also not so nice because filter is not the best term for it, but we will change it. Um, we can now decide which attributes of the of the referenced um, entity shall be displayed in my uh, table view, in my list view, because I don't want them all there. We have more options here. The most uh, options are optional. Yeah, most of them are not needed, but you can use to define links or um, uh, the, the, the behavior if you have um, uh, um, a mobile view and so on. You can also describe this. The next thing is we define a detail page. A detail page for a participant. Um, yeah, we only have to create a reference to the entity here. We can uh, make reference to several entities. Here we just make one. And yeah, last but not least, the third part of the model, and then we're done. I also skipped the part where I created the other pages. Yeah, you see that here. We also have other pages, index detail pages for um, the talks for the rooms as well. The extension part in the model, now it gets specific to Joomla. Um, you can use that to create your extensions now, yeah? To say, okay, I want to have a component or an extension package as well. Component, module, library, plugin. Etc. And uh, within that definition, you uh, create the references to your pages. Yeah, that's all. So we start creating a component. Give it a name, Jam Beyond. The block here. We start with the manifestation. Yeah, um, you just have to. It's a requirement in the current state. You have to create the author, the email, and URL. I don't know why it's. Uh, why it's needed, but yeah, we it's the current set. It's okay, it's good. And this is the component manifest. That's all. The next thing is the language support. Which language would you like to support in your component? Um, you create a language block, and in that language block, you just create um, just create a uh, yeah um, a placeholder, a block for the language you like to support. You can also use this block to create your own key values yeah, for your language. But um, if you don't do so, the, all the, the implicit uh, language constraints you have to, to, for the entities, for the views and back end and front end, will be generated automatically. You don't have to uh, create them. They will be there. You can also create them on the fly. It's okay. Okay, such a kind of individual things. I see, yeah. This is part of the, yeah, yeah. You can do that, uh, but then you have to, uh, to um, create your own key value pairs here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, and after that, we only, what we only have to do is we create the references to the pages we want to uh, illustrate, we want to have in our extension. Uh, pages means not only the views, also what uh, 
is dependent to it, yeah? the, the views components, uh, the views modules, controllers, etc. And we have the sections here, so we can uh, decide here if it's if I want to have a page for the backend section or for the frontend section. I don't know, it's for a backend section. We create a reference to the page, and you see here we only have all our pages we already uh, created in our model, and we can now just click on it, and we have the reference. You don't have to write it. You don't have to consider the name because it's, it helps you. The editor helps you. So that's it, and uh, then you're done. Okay, this is not easy because you don't know the language, the modeling language. But if you get a model, yeah, and you just use it and change it as you like, then it's quite easy. I will show it later. The whole model, it's not that big, not that large. That's really all you have to do to define. That's all what I have to do. And where's your um, relations gone? The one to many and the one to one relations? Where yeah, um, and that's, this is a simple model. You have just simple relations here. Um, when you create a relation, I have a relation in that example. When you create an attribute, and you can also create relations from entity to an entity. And then you say, OK, this is a one-to-many um, relation, and um, I want this attribute, the name of this attribute, and this is a relation to another attribute. So and then you just save your model. And as you see on the left side, there's a new folder which is created automatically. And now you know how a Joomla component looks like. When we open that folder, we have our component here. Yeah? And all the names are correct. All the, the requirements which we have when we create a component are correct. Everything is, uh, is done automatically. You don't have to do it. You see there's a lot of code what is created, not only files, also code in the files. The language folders with the files in it, um, yeah, backend, side, and with controllers, model views, of course. As I said before, it's um, we are not finished, of course. We just started six months ago. It's a lot of time, but create, creating such a generator is a lot of work. Yeah? It's the pain and gain of model-driven development. Using it is the gain. It's perfect. Woohoo! I just click a button and have a simple model. But creating the generator, the generator, I don't know, it's 50,000, 60,000 lines of code. Yeah? It's, it's a lot of dependencies there. It's very hard. Yeah. And that with two, that's the pain, and it's really a pain. Yeah, trust me. Yeah. 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 It's just the first stage. Yeah. Um, when you create such an infrastructure, you take um, a reference application, where which you use as an um, yeah as the reference for your end. We used weblinks, the com weblinks, and we used our own uh, extensions. And we also have a kind of standard in our extensions. And yeah, there we create the extra folder for it. That's why we did it here. But we will consider all the options in the in the next steps. So what kind of code do we have now? Yeah, we just open. Uh, let's open a view, for instance. I hope. Yeah, I know it's small. Maybe in the, in the back it's not so easy to read it. But we have um, the things, the Joomla standard here, for instance, when you create a view, you have component, the name of the component, the type of its view or model or controller, and then the name of the page of the view. Um, you see all the code there. All of this code is just generic or schematically redundant code in your extensions. Every time you create a component, you have to write all of that code just for the simple components, yeah, as I have now. So uh, this is all done now automatically. You don't have to do it. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, we use code sniffer, of course. We have to change that. They, they, because it's generated, there are some spaces. I know that, yeah, and we're working on that. We, yeah, of course, yeah, with at least space holders and you, the author you created in your manifest um, option in the model. Yeah, so that is what we created. I think um, it's good, yeah, it's good stuff, we can use it. But let's see if we really can use it. That's the second part, second part of the demo. Um, take it and install it and click through it. So, okay, yeah, I still have time, I think. So, what we do here, simplest way, is uh, to open the properties of the extension. 
copy the path where it is generated yeah, from the project. So it's, I think it's clear to do that. Then switch to, uh, to a Joomla 3 backend, log in. Yeah, for some model, it's, it's easier for the backend now. Go to the extension manager and install it. Yeah, install it from the directory you have. Okay, it's not that hard. Insert the location, it's obvious. Um, no, not yet, but it will. It's on the list. Yeah, and here you see we have some struggles with the language file here for the for that view only. But if you go to the to the main view, you see there's a main view. We we didn't um, create it in the model. It's just simple, yeah. It shows us all the, the sub menus we have for the for the um, component. We see here there are the three views for the three ent entities or for the three pages we referenced in our uh, component. And we have the backend views here. Uh, yeah. The, the, all the submenus for our JNP on this. So the names were correct. It's all with the language strings. Everything works. Let's click, click through the extension. Start with the participant, for instance. Here we create new entries. Yeah, and click on the button because nothing is there. Just click on the button. You open the, the edit view. Um, you don't have to uh, create an edit or a detail view. You just say I have a detail view, and if you do so, the generator also generates an edit view as well. Because if you have details, you can use it for the for the editing as well. Yeah, I'm a participant of uh, JM Beyond, so I uh, create an entry here, and you see it's there. You can use it; it works. All the language uh, files work, and everything is. Um, as a, as a first initial stage of extension, it's very good. You have it here. Create a talk, my talk, save and close. You can use uh, the, all the buttons here. Um, I think, yeah, you can. This is what I meant with the is primary tag. Yeah, this is also generated here, the JumliD. Um, this attribute was the, is primary in the model, so this is also a link to the edit page. But you can create other links if you like to. Yeah. This is more important for the front end, of course, because the back end is more generic than the front end. And yeah, this works. So now comes the thing of maintenance. Of we want to change something in a model because we say, ah, okay, I have another attribute in my entity participant, an address. Yeah, I create a debate type again, but now I create. Um, I will that I don't want just a text field. I want the editor here. Yeah, so I just type in editor because I create one data type and the generator if he reads editor he knows okay this should be the visual editor yeah later in the detail view then I change the attribute name from the room to room name that's what I want to do and I want to add pages for the program for agenda items yeah that's what I do I wrote it in advance and just uh, commented it out so Oh, we have an error here. This is also nice from the editor. It says here we have a reference from the index page room to the room, to the entity room, but I changed the attribute. So I also have to change it here as well. It doesn't solve it automatically. I have to do it. But it shows me at least that there is an issue. So no problem. Thanks to auto completion. Change it. And if you take a look to the left, there are still just the views we had before, yeah, we had in advance, uh, participant rooms and talks. But when I add the page reference for the section, here for the backend section, and save it, then you see it gets generated, yeah, and we can use it. So it's there. We, we use this. Here you see it's just the page. I'm not cheating here. Yeah, it's the same page. I go to reinstall it. I just have the three views here. Reinstall the component. Okay, and you see there's the next one. Yeah, it's no cheating. You can use it if you like. It works. Yeah, we have the new views. We have uh, also our existing data. It's not deleted because I reinstalled it. It's just an update. Yeah, so it's there. Just use it as an update. And when you click on a participant, you remember we created the new entry here, the address. You see the editor here. Yeah, as we uh, created in the model. Yeah, and uh, last but not least. 
the room name change to room name. Yeah, that's what we also did in the model. Yeah, this was my uh, my small my little um, oop, uh, demo. Just show you the last slide here. Just again the code what is all generated, and you have to do it by hand normally. By hand means copying and changing it or using a generator for the initial uh, creation. This is work, and you see this works. And creating that model was not that hard. And also uh, for people who are not familiar with the modeling language, I think. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you change your database schema, does it create a different style? Is it different than um, open? Not yet, but we will do that in the next stage. Um, we, we are struggling uh, currently with, uh, with the, the updates because when we have an update, we have to check what was what we have in advance. So what which we we don't have a version control there, but we have to check it. We have to check all the the update files here, yeah, and uh, it's not that hard. You can do that kind of reverse engineering, and when you've done that, then you can create the updates. It's, it's it works now, but not as I want to. So yeah. It will. We are two, two persons. You can help if you like. So, to finish my presentation, um, just show you again what I uh, what the um, um, the model was looking like. We just had three main parts there: the entity part, yeah, where we created our entities, and you see here, all of them look quite the same. Yeah, it's not that hard. If you create one, you can also copy it and change it. Yeah, and. Uh, we have the pages and the extension part, and that's all you need for creating a component in our way, in what I've did, in a model-driven way. So what do we want to do is further work. Of course, we want to improve the editor a little bit. Yeah, Textual editor is it's good for large um, um, models, but nobody wants to learn a new modeling language, new editor. We want to click the things. We want to use it as we uh, are used to, and we want to do it a little bit easier. So this text-based editor, it works perfect for us to, um, yeah, to make our infrastructure better. But yeah, in the next steps, we want something else, a graphical editor, or maybe a kind of, um, yeah, a kind of uh, like the, the, the component generator where you just click through web pages and my uh, my model driven infrastructure runs in the back end yeah so things like that we want to improve the generators yeah a better structure for an easier extension um, what i said before and what we want to do is we want to combine the ejsl and the cjsl so that we can do both in our models um, create the extensions and also um, on an more concrete level, use the extensions for applications to create complete applications with the extensions in it. Not that easy. And of course, the organizational things, move to GitHub, better documentation, it's not that good, I know, and I blame for it, but yeah, that's what we've done. So thank you very much. Um, to uh, give a conclusion, you saw the, the infrastructure I developed in a demo and how easy it can be to create a component and not only an initial creation, also the maintenance of it if you change something. And MDD, model-driven development, can be a good way to do this. I have to uh, do more research, of course. I have to improve the, the, the infrastructure. And I hope there will be some more conferences where I can uh, present my current states if you are interested in it. Thank you for coming. And I think we have some time for Yeah. Thank you. We had some some question stage in the talk, so <laughs> it's late now. But are there some other questions? No, too late. Okay, okay. Thank you.